What's up guys, it's Ryan Movie Guy here. One second. Ryan Movie Guy here. I'm gonna be late for my Mission Impossible review. Get ready. So this, you can't even see. Yeah, this review is impossible. So I just saw Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Um, well, I just seen it, it's been a week now. <laughs> I have some thoughts on it. It's once again written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie, or McHugh, as people call him. Uh, he did Rogue Nation and Fallout, two previous entries in the series. And now he's doing the final two-parter of the franchise. I'm a huge fan of the series. I love these movies. Uh, my only nitpick with them is that the plot can be a bit repetitive. They're always going rogue. It's like the IMF is low key like the worst organization ever, but at the same time, you know, it's just the framework to watch these great stunts and the spectacle of it all. That being said, Tom Cruise is back in the producing role and he's starring in it, obviously, as Ethan Hunt. We got Luther, played by Vin Rames. We got Benji. Simon Pegg's back, Ilsa, Rebecca Ferguson, and then we have some returning guests as well, like Vanessa Kirby, and we got Asai Morales as the villain. Of course, the list goes on with the cast members, but what you guys probably want to know is, is the movie any good? And that's a resounding yes. I gotta say, the first time I saw it, um, or when I saw it early on, uh, I think... I think I might have been movied out because there were a lot of set pieces that reminded me of stuff that had come out this year. Um, without getting too spoiler heavy, there are some action beats that I'm like, okay, I've seen this in like two movies recently, I've seen that in a movie recently, but the more I thought about it, I was like, those movies were so much weaker that it made this film look even better. And I gotta say that hats off to this team really they, they really take their time perfecting every action scene making sure they get as much in camera stuff as possible that's obviously not with special effects they might patch a couple of things here and there but overall it's very much practical and we just don't see that in a lot of big budget movies so the plot is very similar to a lot of the other ones again they go rogue big whoop but at the same time it's like you can't really complain like sometimes I talk with friends about how it would be nice to see Tom Cruise return in a more dramatic role like Born on the Fourth of July or Magnolia but at the same time he's so good at what he does and you clearly tell that you can clearly tell that he's just so amped up to give us the best theater experience and it seems like especially in the blockbuster realm which are the movies that most people are going to see um, well, not nowadays, since we've had, like, ten flops this year. But, like, you can tell that Cruz really cares about this team, and people say the best things about him. And everybody else brings their A-game. I think the the performances are really solid. Uh, no one's probably getting an Oscar, but they're all convincing in their roles. I will say this, though. The film definitely, and it's amazing that none of the films have ever received much recognition at the awards, or at least the bigger ones, like the Oscars for technical stuff like sound or anything, but this definitely deserves uh, some technical achievements, visual effects, sound, cinematography. I'd even say directing for Macquarie. Like, every shot matters. And again, too, the only thing else that I would nitpick is that it goes on a little too long. I hate that every movie has to be three hours now, but again, with a film this so perfect and streamlined and just so well done, I mean, I'm on board. So yeah, it's a great film. Uh, it's probably going to make money anyway, but I would definitely recommend you guys check it out because it is worth seeing. It, and you can tell from every frame uh, there was passion put into it. There was a This was a genuine labor of love. And if this is a sign of what's to come with part two, I'll be the first in the theater for that. So yeah, definitely check it out. I saw this in IMAX. See it on the biggest screen possible. Um, no pun intended. And... Uh, and yeah, I guess one thing too, maybe just to throw out there, I hope they don't give away the big stunt in the last movie because that might have soured my taste going into this one because I knew what to expect. But again, it's just like, 
the it's a movie that the more you reflect on the effort that was put in and even if you're not a cinephile you just go in and you're like okay i just want to see an exciting summer blockbuster there really isn't anything to beat it these are characters that we've grown to love over several years several films and you can tell that everybody genuinely has a lot of fun making these movies but there's thought put into them as well they're not dumb there's definitely goofy moments but they kind of harken back to like the classic indiana jones films um and i like dial of destiny but this is way better than that in every single way and it's just it's just a blast go see it definitely check it out and uh i'll try to get as much more content as possible before oppenheimer and barbie so see ya